Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. How you doing today? Hope all is good. You know, sometimes I struggle to figure out how to make a video to help the most amount of people without being too specific where it just doesn't apply to some people and they go, ah, that sucks, man. Leave me a bad comment there. So I, uh, you know, sort of admire Dave Ramsey in that respect, right? He's got a lot of uh, the big audience to try to address with the most helpful advice. Interesting. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about three accounts that could be better than a 401k, and I would argue if done the right way, are better. Now, before I say this, I'm going to be very clear. I'm talking about a standard 401k where there's no chance of a match. You will always start with the 401k up to the match before you move on to anything else. Not all of us are so lucky, so we're talking about other advantages that you can have in this case. Maybe you're self-employed or you're, maybe your employer just doesn't match. That, that is something that happens. All right. Um, we have the luxury of choosing many different types of accounts. You know, it's not like that in every country. I've had the privilege of helping people in all kinds of countries. Uh, it's not like that. It's pretty cut and dry in a lot of countries. Um, the first account I want to talk about is a regular old taxable brokerage account. I'm just going with the easy one here. Now, you, um, the cons, right? The pros and cons. So the cons are you can't avoid dividend income or capital gains, which are you're going to be taxed on both. So capital gains you can avoid, but only if you 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 know you have to sell the stock and then you get taxed, right? Uh, dividend incomes or different types of maybe corporate restructuring. Yeah, you can't avoid that either because they're going to force you out of the position, but that's a little bit more rare of an event there. Uh, so in a taxable account, you can choose how to harvest your gains or losses. There's no need to do that in a 401k, and that doesn't even exist in a 401k. And if you're diverse enough, then you have many, many opportunities. So often what I find is people have a taxable brokerage account and they just pick a Vanguard ETF or the SPY or the Qs or something. There's nothing you can do. If you have a capital gain, there is no way to harvest that. There's no games or tricks you can play. But if you have many positions, a lot of our clients realize very quickly, holy cow, they have lots of positions. Uh, well, that's for partly because of the tax loss and tax gain harvesting that we can do. Uh, taxable accounts don't have RMDs, whereas potentially a 401k could roll it over to an IRA. You got to deal with all that. You got to pay taxes. There's no age limit. There's no contribution limit. There's no real limit of anything in a taxable account. So you can contribute as much as you like, change your mind, take the money back out, uh, put the money back in all in the same day if you want and keep going back and forth. No problem. A lot of people like that because they say, I'm saving for retirement, but I don't have money to save for retirement and the house and the car and the kids that need to go to school and maybe some charitable giving and stuff. I, I don't know what to do. So they just use a taxable account and, you, and think of that money as one big bucket there. Your beneficiaries in a taxable account get a step up in cost basis as of now, right? Careful when you're watching this video. As of now, right, they'll get a step up in cost basis, which means they essentially acquire the positions that you have at the price that the position was trading at when you pass away. So it's kind of like giving them a tax advantage on the day that you eventually pass away there. Um, there's no time frame on your withdrawals. There's no RMD, like I mentioned a minute ago. So there's no rule on how you take your money out. A lot of people like that there. Um, you can gift low cost basis stock to family or charities and things like that instead of realizing the gain. If you gift it to them, it's their problem. They may be in a lower tax bracket. It may make sense to gift your kid a low basis stock position. That's getting a little advanced there, but that's the case. And then lastly, if you're diverse enough, you can fight the good fight with the IRS in terms of showing low capital gains pretty much every year. 2018 was the only year I had, no, 2019. I had no answer for people with tax loss harvesting. Nobody had a loss, right? You had to really mess up in 2019. But other than that, every year, this year's a great example of how you can get some losses on paper to offset, now the market's rallying, future gains, right? So you gotta play those games. So taxable account, don't write it off because you hear the word taxable or capital gains or ordinary income, things like that. Don't, don't play that game. Get a little more specific with it. Uh, number two, which could and probably should be number one really, is the HSA, Health Savings Account. This is different from an FSA. An HSA, uh, you're allowed to put money in, get a tax deduction for it. You have to have a high deductible health care plan. A lot of people do these days. Uh, so you get a tax deduction for putting money in. The money grows tax-free. You can invest and should invest the money. 
A lot of times you get a menu of investments you can choose from. Some of you lucky ones can invest in anything you'd like. Um, if you take the money out for medical expenses, it's tax-free, both the growth and the dollars you put in. They don't get much better than that. And you want to know a little trick? A lot of people do this. They pay for their little medical expenses along the way, or maybe you get a medical bill for $500 and you say, I got the cash, right? I'll take it out of my taxable account for no capital loss or capital gain, or maybe put a little capital loss on paper. I'll take it out of that account and I'll pay for my medical expenses, but I'll keep that receipt because in an HSA, you can retroactively reimburse yourself. So I have clients that are building up a war chest of receipts that maybe 15 years from now, they're going to pull that money out and say, that was to reimburse that cost way back in 19, well, 2000 and whatever, right? So it's retroactive. A lot of people don't know that and take full advantage of that, but you can. And when you're 65, an HSA essentially turns into a traditional IRA on paper. Now your account doesn't change to an IRA, but it changes to the tax treatment of a traditional IRA with the added bonus that there's no RMDs. So you don't get to age 70, 72, depending on how old you are, and start having to take money out, right? So awesome benefits there, something to consider. Remember, you do have to have a health, high deductible healthcare plan. Please confirm that before you do anything. Oftentimes you'll see your name and then HDHP next to it. That's a dead giveaway that you're HSA eligible. Uh, and then the final one, you gotta mention it, man. Gotta throw it out there, the Roth IRA. Right? This is tough if you're older. So if you're older, making more, closer to retirement, it's tough to really put money away and see that benefit. But for the younger crowd, the all the way up to say 45, 50, that maybe isn't making a ton of money just yet, uh, good for you guys as well. Um, it does have an income limit on contributions. So there are a few restrictions there, but the money is all tax-free, both the growth and the deposits. You probably already knew that because you've seen lots of videos that I've done, so I won't bore you with that. You could take your deposits out anytime. That's unlike the 401k. If you put $1,000 in and next month you say, uh, I changed my mind, I need to take it out. No tax, no penalty, no nothing. I don't care what age you are or how long the account has been open. That's a common misconception there. People hear the five-year rule, that is not you. If you put 1,000 in, the day you open the Roth IRA and the very next day you take 1,000 out, nobody cares. Right, totally legit, people like to do that. You can use a Roth IRA for your kid's college or maybe your grandkid's college, whatever it may be. And the government doesn't see it, right? So when we talk about uh, financial aid or the financial, uh, shoot, what do they call it? Uh, the responsibility that falls on the family uh, for their part of college, the government doesn't look at Roth IRAs. So you're allowed to take out of a Roth IRA for higher expense or higher college education, right? And not be penalized on it, right? No matter how old you are there. So that's pretty cool there. Also, there's no RMDs. I think I mentioned that one already. And um, the, the, just the trouble is if you're late in life saver, you're just getting started, uh, because there's the limit this year, 6,000, 7,000 if you're over the age of 50, it's really hard to get a significant amount of money in there relative to hopefully what you have elsewhere, your, maybe the equity in your house or whatever it is. So that's one drawback there. But when it comes to thinking about a 401k, don't blindly put your money in there. And like I said, this is tough for me to make this video general enough. So you, someone will find fault with it and I accept it. But don't just blindly go, my company has a 401k. I will put money into my 401k. No, let's see if there's a match first and then let's talk about the other ideas that you have because I'm sure I mentioned something in there that was just a little bit different than what you probably are used to hearing, not your general information that gets you thinking. And I hope it does, right? If it does, maybe you'll check us out at jazzwealth.com. We are financial advisors that love these little things, man, these little tricks that we can get around and make you uh, have more dough or keep your dough straight, as we like to say. Um, I'll be back later for the closing beat, I believe. And so, no, no, actually, there'll be no closing beat today. I'm sorry, no closing beat. Uh, but I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Hey, you made it to the end. That's awesome. Well, if you want to check out more geeky stuff, be sure to check out that video over there. Also, if you could subscribe, that really help us out. We're financial advisors that love to teach, and you'll find all kinds of free stuff on our videos. And remember, keep your dough straight. Yeah. I did it. You did it.